Hello everybody, it's Dali here from Dali Art and today I wanted to share this beautiful project with you using the forest. Um, this is from the Stamperia but I've actually made the background using their stamps and their stencils and this beautiful mould with the squirrel and the acorn and it's all about silence speaks louder than words and at the moment I think that's so true. I wanted to share this with all you mums and dads, grandparents, sisters and brothers, aunts and uncles. So something that you can actually make as a family with the children. And it's such a lovely project and it's sort of bringing the outdoors in. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to say to you is, is we've actually put a kit together. Now the kit is um, comprised of, um, you've got the stencil, let me just hold that up for you slightly at an angle Oops, before I drop it off. Um, there we go. You've got the stencil, you've got the twine, you've got some hesse in there. You've got this beautiful stamp with bark, a hedgehog, leaves, acorns, um, sort of uh, fir trees. And you've got this um, beautiful whole um, sentiment there as well. We're also going to be giving you this beautiful squirrel, which we've already made for you out of air dry clay with a little acorn. And you've got this beautiful stencil, which can be used for so many techniques. And also we're going to be providing the white card. Now let's get started and make this project. So the first thing I've done is, just to make life easier, is I've actually taken the A4 sheet, which we will be providing you. Let me just show that to you. So just an A4 card stock, which is actually quite heavy weighted so that you don't need to look for this with the children. And what we've done is, is we've actually given you um, sort of the card stock so you can cut a circle. Now I cheated, I just used one of these sort of polystyrene plates. You could use a glass plate. Just basically you could go around a roll of sellotape. So it's really for the children and you can make it whatever size you want. I found that this size was quite nice. So it's sort of medium size. So that's what I did. Now the rest of the card, we do need this because we're going to be using this card to create the background and the techniques that I've, been, I've shown you already. So first thing, I'm going to show you two techniques today. The first technique I'm going to be showing you is using uh, the distress inks. Um, so with the distress inks, what I've done, I've just picked up, a, randomly just picked up a few colours. I've actually got mustard seed here, I've got tea dye, I've got um, cracked pistachio. Now if you don't have these, for any reason, please don't worry, because the kit actually comes with two lizors, which is the second technique I'm going to show you. These are really nice and mucky, because I've been using them. So basically, I'll be showing that with, with those, and this is some, they're all water-based products, so they're really safe for the children. But let me start off with it for all of those who have got actually got distress oxides. So the easiest thing is, is we've got all the little bits put at the bottom. So let me start. So the, the idea here is, is to create your background. Now we do have the forest pad, which we could use as well. So let me take that. I'm just going off there, lifting your ball up a little bit, your blending tool, and just going in. And now this is a really subtle color, which I really love. Um, so I'm just going to use a couple of colors. Just blend all that in. Don't forget to change your blending tool each time. I'm just going to put the blending tool on the top. And then take the blending tool off this one. Yes, they're mine. So, so they're um, they're actually pips. So if I get this messed up or anything happens, you'll be seeing me hurt. She says I've been big trouble. So what I'm doing here is is just blending those all in, and it's really this is about creating the background. And you'll see as I go along how I'm going to create this. Now if you've got watercolors, if you've got inks. You can use all these different techniques to create this background. But I actually like the Distress Oxides a lot, and I love this technique as well. So I know a lot of you have got Distress Oxides, so it's a really lovely way to do this technique. We do sell on Delhi Art Market um, ink pads, so I know Paul's bought some in for those, for those children who do want to stamp and do want to create this background. So all I'm doing is, is just bringing a little bit of colour in. And this is just one way of doing it. So it's just, just so lovely to work with this really nice cardstock um, and to create these beautiful effects with the children. I love the outdoors. I hope you do too. 
Um, it's a very difficult time, so it's lovely with the kids to do this. <laughs> so it's just to show you just a few simple techniques. Pip did the beautiful gratitude jar yesterday, so please do follow us on our YouTube channels on Pip Art and Dali Art. Um, and this just gives you some inspiration to work with. So all I've done is I've just basically, I hope you can see that, covered that to give you a bit of a background. And the next step is I'm going to use a slightly darker colour to actually use the stencil I've used. And this is a really easy technique. You can do this using... <coughs> sorry. Uh, it's just coughing in the background. Um, so really what I've done is taken a darker brown this time and I'm going to use that to create the, this, the effect with the stencil. So I'm just going to take the stencil. The stencil is something else you get. So you get the two lazors and you get this as well. It's an absolutely beautiful stencil. We've got so much going on, a bit of geometry, a bit of flowers. Now we have got several forest stencils. So if you don't get this one, you'll get another forest stencil if we, if we run out of stock. Um, but I really wanted to show you that we do have some beautiful stencils in this range. And again, this is something you will keep. So it's not something you buy and then you don't use again. This is something I've been showing you with all the products, different techniques. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take mine off a little bit. And I'm going to move mine across a little bit. So it's just I'm going to take it in and I'm just going to rub with my blending tool just to put a little bit of colour into the background. And you'll see it's really easy to do. Um, if you want, obviously with the children, you can tape your stencil down. I actually haven't, but if you wanted to, you could definitely tape it down with some tape. Um, and that way you wouldn't, you could easily control it better. So I'm just adding a little bit of colour in the background. So there we go. So the next thing I'm going to do is continue with that, just adding a little bit of colour. If you want to bring a second colour in, you can. If you want to add more depth to it, um, that's all you do. And I'll be showing you that as well. So let's just put that in. And this isn't about being perfect. This is just about creating a little bit of a background that you can use. So I'm just going to change it. I'm going to put a little bit of dark, um, a little bit of the green into this as well, the crackled pistachio, so that you can see exactly um, by adding a little bit of colour how you can change that background. I'm going to slightly move it across. Now you can do so many techniques with stencils, and I know um, Pip and I are going to be doing Technique Tuesdays, um, so please tune in, um, and we'll be showing you a lot of techniques with products you purchased from us previously. We've we'll shown you how to make scrapbooks, um, some um, mixed media techniques. So now can you see how beautiful that looks? So there you go. So I'm going to carry on with the other side and just continue with that. Just overlap the other design over the other design. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go in with the green on this side a little bit more. And then I'm going to do the opposite way around. Don't worry if it moves. It's um, obviously if you do tape it down, obviously you won't have these problems. But I do like the fact that this is. It's all about creating a background which is not really um, going to be your foreground. So your you know, your squirrel and all your other bits can be your foreground. So you can see I've got sort of two shadowy bits there going on. You can see how beautiful that is and how lovely that looks. Now you can leave it like that, or you can put the stencil back on again, which is the other beauty, and just go over it. All you do is position it back wherever it was. And I'm slightly going to offset mine, and I'm going to do a little bit more brown. So Dolly, I am going to go do some curbside deliveries. Do you need anything before I go do my deliveries? No, sis, I don't. And good luck with your curbside deliveries. <laughs> keep away, keep your distance. I will. And I know we're playing by the rules, so... Good luck. All right. We'll see, see you later. later guys. Bye. Bye. You know, there's a lot of people who rely on crafting for many, many reasons, whether it's medical reasons, whether it's just the way they release their anxiety or, or you know, lots of different reasons. So this is really a good way to keep sharing these crafting tips with you. So there we go. So I'm going to leave it as that for the background. 
So now what I need to do is, is I will need to create the foreground. I'm just coming back to show you. Um, that is the image at the moment. So now what I'm going to do is start creating the foreground using the stamp that we're providing you as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with this beautiful, um, the long strip off the bark. And this is great for creating fences, great for creating backgrounds, great for creating a wood effects. So lots of different reasons. I'm going to use the same brown ink that I used for the stencil to create the next layer. So what I don't want it to do is I don't want it to have straight lines. So what I'm doing is I'm using a piece of paper, just copy of paper, any paper, newspaper, anything, and just going in and just creating a little bit of a background. Not too much, but it's just more about dipping it into the ink pad, moving it along and creating a bit of background. And all that does is just add more. Now, can you see where I've started that, hopefully? So you can see there I've started it. So it's just breaking that design up a little bit more to the next level. Hopefully you can see that my light's a bit bright, um, but um, I think you can get the gist of that. So let me just carry on with that. And all I'm doing is just building, building that up. So there we go. So I just, it's just nice to show you all these different techniques. I know that everybody has different techniques. And the beauty of these stamps is they're so thick, they're already rubber mounted, they're high definition. What it means is, is you don't need a block to, to actually stamp with these. So if you haven't got a block, then you don't need to worry about that. And you can just use them in spaces where you want. So I'm just using my finger to press it down and to create this beautiful background. And that's the beauty of having these stamps is you don't need an acrylic block. If you didn't have an acrylic block, then you could use the back of a CD, you could use a, a piece of um, cardboard, you could actually use a lot of different things because all you want to do is, is use it to create a background. So that's where I'm at with that. So I've created this. Can you see those lines and ridges? So you've got that. That's your bit of background. At the same time, while I'm at this level, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take, and if you want to use, you can use a paper. This will stop you putting your mucky paws on everything. So all I'm going to do is take the blending tool and blend. If you don't have a blending tool, what I sometimes do is I just use a slightly, um, a baby wipe and use, do my edges or a makeup, a bru makeup a brush or, or a, um, a sponge, a makeup sponge any of those things. So all this is doing is just bringing the edges together if you've got any white card. Again, everything is optional. This is just one way of doing it. So that's that level. So the next thing I'm going to do is, is I need to create the next level. Now the next level is, is what I'm going to look at how I'm going to do all the background images. Now I'm going to create the same effect on my piece of card. Now remember I said to you, keep your card. Well, here's my bit of card. So all I'm going to do, just so that you're not wasting any card at all, I'm snipping this corner off. And I'm going to actually snip this corner here so that you can actually use your card for other projects, making cards, etc. So there's quite a, you know, quite a bit there. I'm sure everybody has card stock, but I thought I would provide it. So now the beauty of these stamps, as I've already said to you, is they're absolutely beautiful to work with because they're so thick. And the easiest thing for me to do was is to stamp with them as they are. So first I need to create a background for my image. So the best thing for me to do is, is to take the lighter colours that I've got on the background. So let's go back. Now you could do this all in one go when you're doing the, full, the, the, the first part of the circle, or you could do it in two steps, or you could just stamp them and leave them blank. It really is up to you what you want to create. So let's put three of these colours and let's create some beautiful backgrounds for our stamps to go on. So there we go. So there's no, there's no fast rules for this. Can you see? There we go. So I've just taken one of the colours and I've just gone across that. Now, I'm going to take a bit of the blue and bring that in. And then I'm going to finish off with the mustard yellow yeah, seed, I should say. This is the um, tumbled glass, if you want to know what this one is. So it's pistachio, cracked pistachio and tumbled glass and mustard seed I'm using 
to create this background effect, which I really love. I want to introduce a little bit of warmth to it, and you can do so with using uh, more of a, I suppose, a tea dye or, or something a little bit more richer. So there we go. So all I'm going to do is just bring a little bit of yellow into this, just randomly. And we've got that background going on. I might bring a little bit of brown into the leaves as well, because it's going to be creating the leaves. It's going to be creating some of the background we're going to be creating. So there's no harm in that. I'll probably take the tea, tea dye one, because that's a little bit lighter. Do that. And there we go. So not too much, because I don't want too much brown in there. We want a little bit. Oops. I just love the way this all comes together. Right, so that's our background created, very similar. I don't know if you can see that because the light is very bright. Um, so that's great. So that's one, that is the background. And now what you do is you take again the same colour brown I used to start off with, which was walnut um, stain, because it's slightly darker than the others. And all you do is lift one of your stamps, Keep the picture upwards and just take your fingers, put a little bit sticky on top so you can actually control them and you can do it this way. And all I do is I just take that and then I make an imprint of it. So there you've got this beautiful leaf. Can you see that? There you go. And that's what I do. I do several of those different ones. So take the own and you can do that so obviously you can create lots of different things um, using these stamps this is just some of the techniques and so forth I'll do a little bit of this little acorns and again that's how you're going to create the imagery that you can see so what happens is that's how I've created all these leaves in the background what I've done is, is this is a slightly different technique and I'll show you this, but that's what I'm doing is I'm creating these leaves in the background. So, so that's what I'm doing. Now, if you want to go darker, like I've done there, and you just take a VersaFine um, and you go darker. So what I've done, if you want to go darker, this is what you will get. You've got a slightly different effect like I have in my image by doing that. So let's go on there. There we go. And that will that do is just give you a darker effect. Can you see that? So there's two ways of doing it. So here I've got quite a dark effect. So that's how I've created those in the background. So all I did then was I cut these out, just using a pair of scissors, and just went round and cut these right to as close as I could get to the actual imagery and went through and cut them out. And then what you end up with is these leaves like this all cut out to help you build your project. So let me just put these out of the way. So that's how we get the leaves, the, 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 the acorn um, and, the, and the cones. So that's how that is and also the sentiment. Absolutely beautiful stamps which you can use in lots of different ways. So the next step for me is, is taking my piece of art, centering it, roughly where I want it. So we've used the stencil, we've used the stamp, we've then used the stamps to stamp again to create these beautiful pieces. So you've got all of these pieces here. And then what we're going to do is we're also going to, um, we've also given you, I should say, the squirrel and the acorn. There we go. So now the best way to, to colour these I found was to use the um, the, the inks and all I did was I literally took the darkest colour colour on this occasion and I'm going to show you this with the resource which is what you get in your kit because that creates a slightly different effect and all I did was go in and I coloured these and what I found was with the resource you could take it to the next level so I'm going to show you to the next level with the lizards and also how to create a different background with the lizards and then I will be putting it all together for you. So all I'm doing is look how that's coming to life. 
see that? That's so cute. So let me um, let me carry on with this. I'm going to show you the different techniques. So that's one technique to create a background like that with the distress oxides, and then to start to build your scene on that. So that's one, which is how this has been created. Okay, now there's another idea I've got, um, which I did, which is also creating this background. So slightly different but with the lazores, but looking a little bit more rustic, looking a little more forest-like for my, I think, and I've done exactly the same. So I'm gonna show you how to get to this, and then as I've shown you already, I've stamped some, some of the images. Let me get to this bit for you. So again, what you need is, you need to cut a circle. So I'm just going to use this um, roughly to cut, to cut around this. Let me use this little bit just to show you. I want to show you the technique. So let me just use this little bit here just so I can show you the technique. There we go. So you could use anything, like I've said. And then all I'm going to do is cut around that circle. And this is such a beautiful technique as well. And in fact, you could do two lots of techniques. You could make this into a clock. You could do so much with the children. And this is just one way of using what you may have at home. You could use some of your cereal boxes for the background. There's just so much you can do. Now, the lazores are already in the kit because I felt that those who don't have um, distress ink pads or you're with children you want to do a bit more painting and you want to have a little supply and this is a really good way to do it so just finish off the, the raw edges so how do you do this bit so we give you a couple of lizards in your kit we've given you a pine color and we've also given you a beautiful chestnut color okay you just put them onto a mat or like a greaseproof paper or anything like that. Um, just go and get this from here. And all you do is you just basically get some water, either with your hands or if you've got a spritzer, just spritz it away. Okay, I've got a yellow left on my page from the blending. And what you're going to do is you're just going to pick some of this ink up. This is going to create you a different type of background with the children. Now, can you see that? It's absolutely beautiful. It's a very, very forest-like. So I'm going to watch that dry. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to just take a corner of that paper and just show you, let me just take this, how I'm going to stamp onto that as well. So if you just have a look at what I'm doing here, I'm just cutting the bits apart. So, you can take a little bit of that splash there. So can you see that? A little bit of that. And you can carry on doing this. And obviously, if you've got more paper lying around, then carry on doing the technique. So all I'm doing is I'm just doing those. And that creates your background. Now, I don't want to waste any of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a brush. And remember my squirrel? I'm going to finish him off. So what I'm going to do is pick some of that up and bring it in to colour. So you're not wasting anything. These lazores are water-based, so very safe. Um, and it just gives this beautiful effect to the squirrel. I called him Norman. We have a Norman in our garden. So he's my little baby Norman. And he's absolutely beautiful. So you don't need to paint the back, but I'm just gonna put a little bit on the back. So, you know, you can just add a little bit of color, take a bit of color, you can darken it, lighten it, it really is up to you. And the same with the acorn. So you can take the bottom, color the bottom, add a bit more to, oops, to the top, add a few colors, let it dry, build a bit more. You know, these lazores are just so, so forgiving. It's unbelievable. So if you find that your colors are gone and you wanna add a little bit more color, you can go in and you can add more color to this. Let me just quickly wipe that, my little bit of tissue I've decided to pick up. And again, these are just so lovely techniques. So I'm hoping my heat gun is on. If not, my little assistant has gone, but she's left it on. That's brilliant. So all I'm doing is I'm just drying that. Now, if you don't have the opportunity to have it, um, 
heating and destroy it naturally. So I always talk when the heat gun is on for some reason. So that just gives us a beautiful background. I don't mind what that looks like because that is our background. And we're creating these beautiful effects with this paper. Now again, that's something you can create with the children. Um, every time you do it, you'll get a different effect. And all I'm going to do is show you how I get to the next level. So again, this is a different technique but using the resource. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my stencil because I'm doing it on a smaller piece of paper, you actually don't need that much. So I'm going to take the brown lazor, just a little bit, I'm going to take a little bit of this beautiful kitchen roll I've just got already, and I'm going to start dabbing, dabbing through those holes. Again, this is a totally different effect to what I've just shown you, but it is a beautiful effect. And the lazuls are water-based, you can use them as watercolours, you can add them to paste, so there's just so many different effects you can create with them. And just use this, and obviously all the children can do this. It doesn't take a lot of supplies, it's everything we have in our homes. Um, once you've got the kit, then you can make as many different types of projects you like. So this is just one type I'm showing you using the products I'm giving you. And some of the tools that you'll find in your house, you could use a baby wipe, I know some people have done that, but you know, this is a really, really nice way of adding a little bit of background like we've been doing with, with the distress inks. So I love this effect because it's like a water effect versus more of a, a distress oxide effect, which is much more different. I've only used one color here. I absolutely love this. This could be a card topper. So you could use this as a card topper if you wanted to. Let me just block that. So again, you've got this really beautiful background. Now the beauty of the resorts is you can also use it to stamp with. So it's got so many uses. Um, I'm just going to take a little bit of that green and put it on top of our clay squirrel as well while I'm at it. Before I use him for anything else, it's just like a little bit of shading to him. And again with the acorn just at the top. And then a little bit back at the bottom. And again you can build these up as much as you want. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is spark my little surface area is again go in with that stamp. And what did I just put them over here? So what I'm going to do is with this stamp, I'm going to put down, I'm actually going to use the green. And I'm just going to put down a bit of green. I always say, you know, and this is beautiful to work with because all I do is smoosh it in. And then what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to use the side of that paper because I don't want to have the straight lines. And I'm going to go in. And I just love the effects you get with this. And you can use it a couple of times, so you know, it, it's more of a wetter technique and it just creates this beautiful background, which I just think looks amazing. So I can blot it dry actually, so I don't even have to use the heater. Let me just blot that dry. I'm using two pieces of paper, get you more here. So there you go. So it's a really foresty effect that I've created there. And again, we can pick up any access, put a bit more onto dark on the top, um, shadows on the bottom. I just love the effect that you can create with these little, little 
creatures. Oh, they're so beautiful. Okay, so let's wipe this clean. And here we go. So all we're going to do now is show you how to, I've shown you how to stamp, but I'm going to show you how to stamp using the leaves as well. So I'm just going to take well, it's one of the leaves and I'm going to show you exactly what you get. Totally different effect to when you do it with a black marker, totally different effect when you do it with the distress oxides. But just look at that. So each time you'll get these beautiful leaves just using, so any stamps you've got, you can use these lazoles with. But I'll give you this watercolour effect. So underutilised, these lazoles. So I've created this one. I've created this one. So exactly the same products, just used in a slightly different order. Get a totally different look. Two similar products again, same colours, everything. Again, you get a slightly different look. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to build up actually on the other one, the one I've done here. I'm going to show you how to build that up. So what I've done is I've already cut out all the pieces. So what you do first is you start to lay on. You get this little bit of hessian as well. So you just put that down and that will create your um, background for your little squirrel to sit in. So all we're doing is we're just making this beautiful um, imagery picture. And uh, I've got my dad peeping through, but I'm making a video. And he's just peeping through the door to see what I'm up to. I think he's, he was wanting his tea, I think. Um, so here we go. So what I'm doing here is, is I'm just adding with little leaves that we've created. Now the nice thing about the leaves is, is you can actually create them so they're a little bit raised. And you're sort of pushing them together to create this sort of 3D effect. I love this technique. I think it's absolutely beautiful. So there we go. Now you can keep adding to this. I've got a mixture of um, images I've done here. So there we go. And maybe you want another one over here. So can you just see how beautiful they are using that lazul? They're so lovely. I absolutely love, love, love this technique. So each time you do it, obviously it will be different. And each time you can move the leaves around, you know, maybe you want to, I maybe want this one over here actually. Um, so that can go into there. And then you just use double sided or glue or, or whatever you have handy just to build these, these up. So let me just put this one over here. Um, so again, all I'm doing is moving these around just to build this background. But this could be a colour topper, this could be a scrapbook page. This could be your visit, you know, to, to um, the park. This could be, you know, this could be your little story. Um, so, you know, there's just so many different things that you could do. And then just, you know, shape them a little bit, bend them, um, and create a, a more of a 3D, a 3D effect with them. So, and all I did to finish off my little, little, um, squirrel just to bring it up to life was we do do these uh, metallic waxes which I, are absolutely beautiful they're optional but what I find is is it just pops any of the detail that you might have out these are water-based so this is optional we haven't provided this in the kit um, but we, we would recommend it if you did want to use it but I just use it I use it on everything so what I'm doing is I'm just giving the little little squirrel a little bit of shine and then finally to finish him off, he was a very gold squirrel. Now he was not a red squirrel, he was a gold squirrel. So, and that really does give him a beautiful, you can see his little hairs in the back. And so that would go just up there. And if you feel he's a bit too, too gold, like I, I do a little bit, all I would suggest is to just put a little bit of, not too much, just a little bit of lazor on him and just pull that out and then what you'll get is this beautiful resist with the wax and then you can just can you see that now it just looks absolutely beautiful see let's do a little bit on the side so we can see his sides and it is so easy to work with the lazoles so that is the beauty of them and then you just get these beautiful finishes um, 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick all this down just to show you exactly what that can look like. I've got a little hole punch, but obviously you can you know, do a little slit, whatever you have around the house. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this, sort of center it, just do a little punch. These are just very inexpensive. Let's do a little punch at the top. And we've given you some twine that you can feed through as well. Just a little bit of twine, which just finishes it off to hang, but just to look really lovely. I'm just going to tie a little knot in that just so that you can see that. A little bow in it, you can do, it really is up to you. It can be used as a hanging device or a little bow. So all I'm going to now do is, I'm just going to use some little, little um, sticky, sticky pads. And I did have them here and I did bring them. And they're probably right in front of me, which they are. And all I'm going to do is, I'm just going to pop some of those down on the back. Um, again, use double-sided sticky tape. I know, or you can use these foam pads. I know we have these at Deli Art Market. I know we have a lot of um, products. There we go. So just a few, stick them down, and then just carry on building that up with your um, leaves, etc. And then once you've done all of that, you've actually put them down. And what I'll do is I'll take a photograph of this one as well. And what will happen is I'll carry on, I'll carry on doing these, positioning them, having a play, having a look of how I want them to look. Um, let's just put those down. Well, there we go. So you could even throw them on there because sort of leaves just, uh, they have their own, own sort of pattern. So then you would get something like, Let's put a little black eye into with our 3D pens, which I absolutely love. Just doing a little black eye here. And what I'll do is I will come back to him. And I will come back to him. And I'll put a little bit of gold onto that one. So let's dry a bit. And that's what you have. You have this really beautiful, beautiful project, which I need to stick down. And I will send you some pictures. You've got this one, which is with the Lazores. You've got this one, which is with the Distress Oxides. And I'll post both of those pictures for you and you can take a look. Can I say a big thank you for watching? Um, stay safe, wash your hands lots, um, be kind to each other. And I hope all of you can enjoy whatever age, whatever level, making some of these beautiful forest animals. Bye for now.